everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Pazareen and today we are building again in The Sims 4. I have for you guys another tutorial and this one is quite special because I am going to showcase how I built my dream studio for an interior designer. So before anything else, please do consider liking and subscribing if you end up enjoying this and would like to see more of my content. I do post as often as possible. So this challenge was hosted by Milch Milch. Actually, it's still currently ongoing by the time that I was recording this. So you should check out her Instagram, YouTube, and also her Twitter, which I will link in the description. Also, check out all the other entries for this challenge. It is called hashtag MySims4Profession. You can see all of the entries over at Instagram. So of course, I would implore you guys to turn on your cheats. And I also use a bunch of mods, so I highly encourage you guys to get tool mod, red shelf. And for your sim, if you want to put a sim here in the scene later, uh, the post player pack and teleport any sim. Now, it's important to note that I used multiple packs to create this. But you can actually recreate this with just using the base game. And I will show you how I did this in a bit. But first, let me start with showing you guys how to do this modular desk. So firstly, you need to take this shelf, which is a base game shelf, and just line it against the wall. So first thing I'm going to do is show you guys how I place the computer. So you're firstly going to take any desk. For this one, I use Tiny Living, but you could use any, even just the base game ones. And I am going to place a computer on top of the surface. Because this thing is you can't place a computer on the floor or anywhere else, like not on the shelf. So it has to be on a desk or on top of a dining table. And then I am going to resize the desk into like a really tiny one. When that's done, I am going to move this shelf by pressing Alt. And I'm going to move the desk a little bit backwards just so that the computer is on top of the shelf. So as you can see, it is a functional desk. How exactly I hid this, you can see that the table can no longer be seen on this area. Like the tie desk is so tiny, it's actually here. I actually tooled it down to be as minuscule as possible, but I decided to do that later when I've already adjusted all the items and all the clutter within this area. So next, I am going to show you guys how I did the drafting table. So it's the same thing, you have to take another shelf again. I actually resized the shelf because it's quite large as you can see. So we'll see if we could just size it down to 1.25 maybe. And I'm going to rotate it, like I'm going to change the axis so that I could rotate it going this way. So how I exactly duplicated this, I'm going to shift click the object, tool, toggle active object, and hold down alt while I'm still pressing shift on the keyboard. For a more in-depth tutorial on Tool, I'm going to link Twisted Maxi's tutorial. He's the original creator and he did a more comprehensive version of this. I'm just going to show you guys how I used his mod to create new objects. I have to move this downwards because it is floating way above the table right here. So I'm going to move this Tool, Toggle Active Object, and I'm going to drag it all the way down by pressing Alt and clicking repeatedly. So as you can see, I'm kind of creating a wider drafting table. It takes a lot of patience to try and get things aligned. So uh, don't worry if you make mistakes. I am not an expert in tool. I'm quite new to this, which is why I'm showing you guys what I know. But again, an in-depth tutorial, please refer to the link in the description. I kind of miss the fact that in The Sims 3, we had like functional drafting tables because in The Sims 3 Ambitions, which I got to play, we did have an architect career. So this is what I used for the drafting paper or any kind of paper really. You can actually resize this. This is an awning debug from the base game. It's tilted at around 30 degrees as well. So what I did was I actually resized it to make it like slightly smaller so that I could put it on top of the drafting table. And the same thing, toggle active object and you just move it a little bit. Okay, so this is basically your work area right here. It's a modular desk now, a functional desk, but a not functional drafting table. So how did I get these blueprints right here? I'm gonna show you where I found these and how I also made this little bin right here where you're going to hold your rolls of paper. So I have Eco Lifestyle, you just search blueprints. You don't have to look through the debug menu. And here it is, there's the green one and there's a the blue one. We're gonna use the blue one. So this is the red shelf mod and it is used basically for cluttering. So with the red shelf mod, I can just grab it and place it directly on top of the shelves. 
or you can elevate it from the ground that's not a problem either but with red shelf you could just easily place your clutter anywhere and just you know move the red shelf around you can always bring it up from the ground you can do something like this control 9 the astronaut career has this reward so you need to have your ignore gameplay unlocks entitlement cheat on so how exactly i created this bin right here it's trash bin essentially but it works as like this kind of storage so we're just going to use the base game version of that so it's easy as rotating items and just placing it here a really fun thing i like about tool it's already floating so shift click tool rotate and we can change the axis to that let's say 19 so it's standing up and we kind of want it to stand up a little bit more to the right so let's have it 30 to the right so i'm gonna place my blueprints inside so we're gonna go to build mode and hold down alt i like adding a little bit of variety so i like rotating all the other blueprints as well just to make it look a little bit more realistic we're gonna rotate this one because it looks like everything is just facing the same way so we're gonna change it to let's say a different axis and a different angle so it could be something like this so how do i move this right here i just selected all the items here so how do you do that you shift click tool toggle active object and then when you select one object you hold on alt and select everything else within that object so you have this entire group thing and then you are going to shift click to clone it right here there is another way so you have to set grouping box and you have this entire thing and then you toggle group and you can move it around like this that's the other way to do it so i'm gonna show you guys how to do mood board actually this is just base game you don't really need any packs for this one thankfully this is a base game item that you can get when you reach like the level one of style influencer career which is also a base game career problem is is that it is locked so again you need your cheats ignore gameplay unlocks entitlement to access this you can get a little bit creative you could also have like a cork board it's basically gonna be the same kind of tutorial if you're gonna use either of these so i'm gonna show you how i place the swatches on top of this so i downloaded some gallery art this is cc free these are by fruit loops 40 and i think they did such a wonderful job creating these they're just really beautiful and very utilitarian so you can use this outside of this type of build you can have this as like different art or you could also have this as wall decor what i did was i resized these and placed these on top of my swatch board I could also resize these using tool but note that if I place this directly on top of here it's just going to be hidden by the swatch board so what I decided to do was that I decided to move the swatch board for a bit and I'm just gonna place all the items here and just block it just so that I know where it is exactly and I'll place another item this one and maybe it's a little bit bigger because it's like a larger swatch I also use these paint chips i think from kalani who created this it's also another gallery art i'm going to leave a link to their galleries or like the name of their gallery id so you could check their work out as well so i use tool to make these a lot smaller because this is how small it could possibly be i also use art from the base game yeah this is basically your swatch board so if you put this on top of it it's gonna be like that so we're gonna try and resize these chips make them smaller and we're also gonna move everything forward just so that it's sitting directly on top of this swatch board so toggle active object all the ones that we are going to scale maybe 0 0.1 we're actually just gonna move it one by one so this is gonna be more or less the same process tool toggle active object and click on the floor so move items forward until you kind of get the desired results and then from then on you're just going to arrange it on top of this one because i'm going to move this back here in build mode but first we're going to move all of this because these items just snap automatically to the wall okay so i moved it back to where it's supposed to be so we're going to try to move them upward again tool again everything and just click on the wall move them up so you're essentially kind of making like a swatch board using like the items in game and gallery art is quite useful especially in this regard so next i'm going to show you how i made this swatch cabinet or a uh, bookshelf or something that you could put all of these tiles and samples of paint and tiny furniture as well so again you're gonna get these shelves that you're just gonna place there 
and since this is aligned as like a modular shelf you are going to create this space exactly we're going to use vents that are debugs and also these poles i guess that are debugs and they're just base games so i grabbed these cabinets from biba lelula 46 right here it's also another piece of gallery art that's just base game and you could use these to create custom cabinets because they are not functional anyways and as you can see it is quite large sadly so i'm going to resize it with tool i can actually move this without tool so we're just going to delete the wall and move these and the same thing goes with these poles right here that is going to be part of your bookshelf next thing is we are going to cover these parts with these vents and one way you could do that is you have to resize this i can make it smaller and i'm going to rotate it using tool so i'm just going to go back to live mode shift click tool rotate and change axis and empty and we're going back to build mode and just moving upwards okay so that's pretty much sealed you could also do the same with the other side as for these you are just gonna place it in build mode don't forget to hold alt when placing these and I also place this large shelf on top next this is how I actually placed all these items on the shelves these gallery art are CC free and all you have to do is resize them and they'll just automatically snap to a wall and I'm just gonna continue to place watches just so you can see what else you can do with the space and I also used this one from Eco Lifestyle. Let's say it's a wood sample or something or a floor sample or something and that's really cool. And I used a bunch of towels to kind of simulate fabric swatches. And I'm gonna hit build mode again and I'm gonna change the colors just so that we can have like swatches or something in this area which I find super cool because it's not out of character for an interior design or an architecture office to have swatches for the client to peruse. One little neat thing I added were these scaled model chairs that is actually not uncommon for artists and interior design offices to have. So I just scaled down these chairs. I'm going to move these not necessarily using tool, I could just move these using build mode on top of tables, hit control 9 on the keyboard and just bring it up and move it here. They're just sitting on top of the desk or something. I could also do the same with different kinds of chairs. And lastly, I'm going to show you how I did these paint chips. I guess you could call them paint chips. I used this again from Kalani and I actually resized this to the absolute smallest. So you toggle active objects and you press alt and select everything and shift click tool scale 0.15. And I'm going to rotate each and every one of these just so that they're lying down. So I'm gonna delete this wall so you can see them. So you have these paint swatches right here. Tool, toggle active object and just multiply it right here. Shift click so that it appears right there and you just elevate it to make it go down a bit. You can rotate these chips if you'd like just to make it look a little more realistic. It does not snap to the desk so you can move the desk in any way you'd like. So that's practically everything that I've done here. So now I'm going to show you quickly how I edited this using Photoshop. Here's a fun thing I learned from, I forgot whom on Instagram, but I did see someone use like the spa day flooring and the spa day walls to create some sort of makeshift green screen. You could choose to do without this, I just find it a lot easier to take photos I'm using this and editing it in Photoshop afterwards. So I'm gonna take a photo of this in this angle. It's best if the sun is directly facing your model so you could rotate your model or you could change the weather using cheats or MC command center which I enjoy doing. And I'm gonna press tab to my cinematic mode and take my photo. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can create your own dollhouse. This is the reason why I used the spa day walls to take a photo because it's a lot easier to remove the background. So I'm using Adobe Photoshop to edit this. I can provide an in-depth tutorial of this if you're interested, but we're just gonna do a little rundown in case you don't know how to do this yet. So I'm just gonna clean up different parts of this. So I'm just using like a lasso 
to create selections and delete like the wider parts of this and I'm also using the lasso to delete this part including the protruding window because it does not look good so it's best if you actually do it on all sides and you make sure the entire background is like removed the only thing that's left is basically your dollhouse model as for the green screen at the outside of your window there is a way to remove that I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to make it opaque by locking it in Photoshop and I am going to color this entire layer and as you can see it does not go out of the model and I'm just going to place it at the back here and I'm going to remove the stroke from this layer just so that the stroke is appearing here. How am I going to remove this layer right here? I'm just going to delete it first and you're gonna see that it's gonna be black at the back because of this layer right behind it and i am going to make sure this is an unlock layer so since it is locked currently this one right here the black part at the back of this one i am going to remove the lock and i'm going to erase it make sure layer zero copy is is selected and i'm just gonna erase it so that the red part of the background is shown and you can add any background you'd like so you can draw anything at the back of it and if you remove this part this is the big hole where the window is so this is why it appears like this so anyways this is how you can create your own dollhouse in photoshop but again if you want an in-depth tutorial please do let me know because i could create a real in-depth tutorial if you enjoyed this, please leave a like, please subscribe, and thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.